this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today with another gel plate technique that I learned at the weekend at Joe Rice's workshop at Lavinia Stammer's headquarters. If you haven't seen my other video, I'm going to link to that below so you can check that one out. So, and today I would like to show you this technique. What this is basically is you put down your ink on the gel plate and then they use one of your stamps to take the ink bat back off and this creates this silhouette. But I'm not going to stay at this. I'm also, I also want to stamp over this in the foreground then. Keep these images in the background and then use some other stamps. And for this I have already prepared. I'm using my oval, brand new oval um, gel plate. This is from Lavinia Stamps, the Ellipsical Printing Press. Again, I'm going to link to all the products below so you can check them out yourself. For the background, I'm going to use the Lavinia Elements Della Blue. Then I'm using the same stamp as on the example there, which is the Meadow Grass. And then to stamp over this, I have got the field grass. Sorry, you can't see this there. That's the field grass stamp. Obviously, you can use any stamps. I just like this one here. And I'm going to use the Versafine Claire Verdant with that. I have got the Bulrushes stamp. And I decided to use a brown one with this, the pine cone. Depending how it turns out, I might just use a second generation stamping on that and I'll show you in a moment what that means. And then I've got the lavender stamps and I'm going to use the Versafine Clear Fantasia for that. So as always, you need your brayer. So I'm using my... Um, wide one because I've got quite a wide image. You can use a smaller one but this is fine for me. And I'm going to apply, just move this out of this way, I'm going to apply the ink on the brayer rather than going directly onto the gel press. And you don't really need a lot. So just going across, just spreading this out a bit. Mm. I'm looking at getting rid of any sort of edges that I might have. Sometimes it, the um, ink pad leaves an imprint on the brayer. So, but the more often you go over it, the more likely you're going to take it off again. And I sometimes have got a few streaks in there, but this is fine for me, I think. So I'm just using my paper on the side just to take this off a little bit. So, and now I'm going to use my meadow brush stamp as it is. I'll just move this into this picture again. And I'm just starting on the side and I'm just resting this down. Don't press down too much because you don't want the edge of the stamp to actually touch the gel press. Take it off and print it off on the side. Make sure you get the ink off. And then you press it down again. And I would vary the heights so that it looks a bit more natural. I might actually, it looks a bit like I've almost got a bit too much ink on the gel plate, but we'll find out. Sometimes I like to tilt it as well a bit as if it's sort of sitting in the wind. And don't do what I just did, I just nearly put my finger onto the gel plate as well. So the lovely thing about the gel plate is you never know how it turns out and it's a bit of an experiment but I think that's the joy of using the gel plate. As I said I might have a bit too much ink there. So as my card I'm just using my 300 GSM. I think this is a UK craft um, cardstock. Any smooth cardstock is fine. So and I'm putting this down on the table and I've got my gel press on a, an acrylic plate here so that I can turn it over and actually see where I'm placing this. I will cut the cardstock down to my 5x7 card, but this way I can see where I'm placing it. I'm pressing this down, and this way I can see where the ink goes and where I need to press a bit more. I always like to press around the edges 
make sure I've got the full shape and I can see I need to press a bit more there and a bit more there and I think that's fine and then I just lift it up go over it again and then I can peel it off and as you can see it is a bit fainter than I had on the original one obviously the lighter the background color the less the effect is and as I said I probably had a bit too much ink on this um, you can see it's a bit spotty and also it's a brand new gel press so the texture is slightly different but I like this as an effect so I'm just going to leave that to dry for a second and I'll be back with you for the stamping one thing I forgot to mention <clears throat> and that I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a ghost print of this because we need a um, mask for the next um, part of the video. So I'm just using the leftover, whatever's left on this, of, on the gel press. I'm just going to press this down and then that will give me the exact shape of the gel press. It's only faint, but I can use this now to cut out a mask. Okay, I put my gel press away in the packaging again. Always do that. I used to be horrible with it and leave it lying around, but if you get any imprint on it, if you rest anything on it, or if it dries out, it doesn't work as well as it should do. So always put both the acetates on either side and keep it safely in the packaging. So, and as I said, I've already cut my mask. I cut it from the top because last time I cut it from the side and I felt it moved a bit. So if you cut it from the top and basically put a bit of tape on the top again so you've got a full round mask, this should work fine now. And I've got my print here now so I can put this over the top here and now I can stamp on it and varying the heights here without having anything outside of the oval. And I'm going to start with the um, images that go in the background. I will definitely want to have the lavender in the front. So that's going to go on last. So I start with, I think, with the um, field grass. So I've got my verdant ink there and I'm going to ink up my stamp. Make sure you don't have any excess on the outside, but this is fine. It's just my acrylic block is a bit messy because I used some gilding, uh, metallic gilding polish on it. So I'm just checking now. I want, still want to be able to see these in the background. So I'm going a bit lower. And as before, I'm going to go at different angles to make it look more natural. Yeah, that's fine. Go down here. I missed out a bit here, but it doesn't matter because I will put other plants over it. And this one's actually going a bit offside here. The more irregular you have it, the more natural it will look. So, and then I've got my bulrushes. As I said before, I'm going to test now whether this is too dark for me, the ink. It is quite bold, so let me just see what a second generation looks like. Yeah, I think I'll go for a second generation stamping. If I didn't have the lavender, I would probably have this as the main feature, and the colour is really nice. But I think I go on here, and this time I'm going a bit higher again. Yeah, because it is the second generation, so it won't be too bold. Just have a play around and see what you like. It's all your preference, really. I think I'm just adding another one here. Mainly because I don't want it to be too overpowering in the image. Yeah, I think this is nice. Because then you still have this as the main focus in the background. It doesn't get completely lost. So all that's left to do now is to stamp the um, lavender. As 
practice that with this fantasia. And I think the purple, although it's quite bold, it will go with the blue as well as with the um, pine cone, which is a sort of a warm brown, really. So, and I'll start right in the middle. I want quite a few of these. But I don't want to go too low with these because lavender is naturally quite high. So I don't want to vary this too much. But I want a few more bundles of them. Because they are not really, they hardly ever stand on their own as such. Tell you what, I do some second generation stamping as well with these. Yeah, that's nice. So... Then I can have them at the same height without looking too bulky. One more on the edge here. Yeah. So I'm just lifting the mask off just to have a look if I need anything. It's a bit bare down here. So I'll have a quick look in my stems. What stems I have got um, that have plants that would naturally grow a bit lower and won't have the height and I think I will also find my little bee I think it could do with something up there so bear with me so I have found this mini mushroom which I'm going to use and as I mentioned I'm using my mini bee they're both just a pound each so really useful stamps to have another option would be the fern I always find that very useful just to fill up the bottom of the cards but I'm not going to use that today so, so I'm just sticking with this and I've decided to stamp this with the shady lane it's a brand new ink for me I've never used it before um, at first I thought I'm not going to use it because it's not as bright as the others but I think all in all it will go quite nicely with it and I like to bring in a bit more green as well so it's a sort of a mossy green I think just for the bottom this will be fine. So I'm just looking up, filling these spaces here. And again, various heights. And I think again I will do some second generation stamping just on the edge here. I want this to fade out a little bit. Nope, that needs a first generation one. Yeah, that's better. I might just as well do one here. It looks a bit too symmetrical now, actually, for me. But I think by the time I put the B on there as a main focus, it will be okay. So before I take the mask off, I want to ground this image a bit at the bottom. And for that, I'm just using my stencil brush. And I'm using the Della Blue again, just to blend in with the background. So I'm just putting a bit on my stencil brush. I'm dabbing it off in the lid a little bit. Also testing it on the, because it's a brand new ink pad, testing it a bit on the paper. And I'm just going in from the sides a bit, just to get the bottom a bit darker. Once I've sort of moved that way in, I can go in that way because I know I don't have too much left on my brush. Also going up the sides a bit and now I can pick it up on from the lid there. I don't need to go back onto the um, pad itself. And this just blends all the plants in a little bit. So I think that's fine. So my little bleed bee, I'm just going to stamp that with my Versafine. Let it fly in from the side. There we go. So I think I'm going to zoom in a little bit now so you can see what I'm doing. Let me move this up a bit as well. Oops, I've now moved my mask anyway, so I might just as well take it off. 
so there you can see yeah, I've got a beautiful image and a beautiful edge here as well so all I think I'm going to do with this one I mean normally I'll just show you an example from the workshop with this one I went um, all over I had uh, used my white gel pen I used some stickers over it some metallic paint but I don't want to do on this on this one because I quite like how subtle it is and all the colors sort of blend in so all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, color in the little bee and this is what I always do I've got a smudge there hopefully I can cut this off if not I have to cut it a bit smaller and create a mat but yeah, I've got a tendency to do that. So I've got these Artistro paint marker pens, they're glitter pens, a bit like um, Posca's. And again, I'm going to link to them below. I think I got them from Amazon. So I'm just painting in the bee a little bit with this yellow golden colour. And I paint and dab a little bit. And then just a little bit of silver for the wings. And I try not to paint over the actual um, stamp image, so not on the black. You can also use some um, wing of Stella just to give a little bit of focus. So let me show you that. I hope you catch camera catches that. Yeah, and that's all there is to it really. As I said, I will quickly cut this out and mat it on a card or put it on a card so you can see what the finished card looks like yeah if you like this card you might want to give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more of what i'm creating you might want to subscribe to my channel i post videos normally two to three times a week and as i just had i've taken part in this Lavinia workshop i'm sure i will show more of the gel plate backgrounds and the techniques and will use my brand new stamps that I recently bought. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.